This tutorial is all about beauty retouching and specifically how to use adjustment layers, lighting, dodging and burning, and of course, frequency separation to create stunning skin tones and textures for basically the basics of how I like to approach beauty retouching. Let's get started. So before we get going, here is the final finished product. Here's the image that we're going to be starting with. So we're going to take this and transform it into this. We're going to talk about everything that goes into creating this image. So you can actually go and download this PSD, How to Retouch Beauty Photography, uh, over at www.tutvid.com. I'll have a link down in the description of this video uh, that will take you specifically to where you can download this image and follow along as well. So let's just jump in and get started. Um, this image is right out of the camera. I haven't done any kind of adjusting to it or anything like that. Um, the first thing we're going to do is a little bit of liquefying and also we're going to fill out the hair on this side of the face. So we're going to get all that out of the way and then we're going to really jump in and work on the eyes and the lips and the nose and the skin and everything. Um, all right, so we're going to start with liquefy. We're going to go filter, liquefy. And I know this is very uh, sort of what people don't like to see in a lot of uh, the retouching and things that go on today. But you know what? We're going to talk about it because it just is a part of what this is. We're going to start with the bloat tool and we're going to make our brush size a little bit larger, not quite that large, maybe something about 500. And I'm just going to click on her eye once, maybe twice, just to make the eyes a little bit bigger. Whoop, we don't want to turn them in like that. There we go. Uh, we'll also do the same with the lips, make them just a, just a touch larger. Undo that. There we go, just like that. And then we can grab the smudge tool here, and we're going to make it quite a bit larger. And the, the name of the game with, um, with Liquify is just a subtlety. You really want to just be careful and gentle. You really almost want it to look like you haven't made any change at all. All right, so we're just going to pull the chin in a little bit there. And also here on the side of the nose, we're going to pull that together. Make that a little bit more narrow. Try to straighten out that highlight on the nose just a little bit. We're going to touch that up with dodging and burning uh, as well in just a moment. All right, there we go. We're going to hit OK. You can see just very subtle changes, but as you'll be able to see here, if I undo... There was the image before, there's the image after. So there is a bit of change. Um, so we've done liquefy. Now let's go ahead and transform or move the hair from this side of the head over to this side of the head. Uh, first thing we're going to do is just fill this little one pixel gap here. Uh, that, that's going to be a little problematic for us. So we're going to go ahead and create a new layer. And we're just going to call this hair 01. We'll have a couple hair layers in all likelihood. And I'm going to grab the clone stamp tool. I'm going to choose the sample from current and below. I'm going to make sure the opacity is at 100%. And I'm just going to sample right around here. I'm holding down my alt. That would be option on the Mac. The alt key. And I'm just going to paint in uh, along the edge just like so. And we can just fill all this right in. And you can see it doesn't it doesn't look uh, amazingly perfect, but I'm not honestly I'm not really that concerned about it. Um, we're really going to focus on retouching the skin and hair kind of just blends together, and it's a one pixel wide line. All right, so that's great. Now what we're going to do is merge both of these layers to a new layer by hitting Control Shift Alt. That would be Command Shift Option and the letter E, and we're going to call this hair hyphen O2. And what we're going to do is take the rectangular marquee tool and drag a selection down the middle of her face, just kind of like that. And we're going to pop this up onto its own layer. So command or control J to pop that up into its own layer. We can actually delete the hair O2 layer and we'll rename this new layer hair O2. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to hit command or control T and I'm going to right click on this and choose flip horizontal and move it over here to the side of her head. Uh, we can even, if we want to kind of change things up, make it, well, I don't really want to make it larger. You know, I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm not going to mess around with it too much. And I'm just going to commit that change. I, I got a little ahead of myself there. Now, of course, we have our face flipped. It's perfect on both sides. I don't necessarily like that. Um, so what we're going to do, although it is remarkably close, um, I'm going to add a mask to this layer that's filled with black by holding the Alter Option key and selecting the New Mask icon. And now what I'm going to do is go ahead and speed this video up and I'm just going to simply paint into this area uh, to fill it in with the hair that we just uh, added right over here. So I'm going to grab the brush tool, make sure my opacity is at 100%. I'm painting with the color white and uh, I'm gonna make, brush, make my brush a little larger and I'm just going to add this hair. All 
All right, so we've taken care of filling in the hair and also doing a little liquify adjustments. Now we're gonna talk about frequency separation. We're actually going to do, I believe, if I'm thinking about this correctly, about three separate frequency adjustment passes on this image, but we're gonna start with just the first one. Frequency adjustment, uh, frequency separation, excuse me, is an amazingly powerful adjustment. Instead of trying to explain to you what it is, let's just do it. So we're gonna again merge all of our layers to a new layer, Control Shift Alt E, that'd be Command Shift Option E on the Mac. And then we're gonna duplicate this layer by hitting Command or Control J. I'm gonna rename this top layer high, and I'm gonna rename the bottom layer low. This is just the way I learned how to do it. I'm gonna shut off the top layer by hitting the little eyeball icon, and I'm gonna select the low layer and go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and I'm gonna choose about a 10 pixel Gaussian blur. I usually do 10 to 15. In this case, I'm gonna go with 10. I basically just look to have all of the sharp edges and virtually all of the detail blurred uh, pretty much to oblivion. You can obviously still identify her, but I don't care about that so much as just you can't really, there's no definitive line where her eyebrow is and the edges of her eye and things like that. Next, we're gonna select the high layer and we're gonna go image, apply image, and we're gonna choose the layer here to be low. We're gonna apply the high layer to the low layer using the blending mode subtract. And I already have the settings in here. You wanna make sure scale is set to two and offset is set to 128. It's gonna give you this very high pass uh, filter look. We're going to hit OK. And then the trick is we can set the blend mode of this layer to linear light. Now, before we do anything, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and we're going to apply a little bit of sharpening to this high um, frequency separation layer. Because what we've just done is placed all of the details of our image up here on the high layer, but we have all of the color of our image on the low layer. This is going to allow us to work with and uh, manipulate our image in a very unique way. So here on the high layer, we're going to sharpen. This is a great way to sharpen, by the way. Sharpen, smart sharpen, and, and I specifically mean applying a smart sharpen to the detail layer of a frequency separation adjustment. Um, we're going to set the amount, uh, not at 150, we'll go with like 75 and set the radius to about 1.0. So it's just a, a light, you know, pass of sharpening uh, just to throw some sharpening in there so we can see all the details and everything that we're really working with. Now, before we begin to get rid of any blemishes or anything like that, the first thing that I'm kind of concerned with is I want to just smooth the transition of color and tone on the face. You know, the, the transition of the highlights on the edges of her face to the shadow line back to a highlight here on her cheek, the highlight to the shadow on the side of the nose, the highlight on the forehead down to these pockets of shadowy area. And when, when you think of shadow, I know you think of that dark shadow cast by an object. These aren't that kind of shadow, but it's just kind of the darker portions of the image. We're looking to smooth all that out. We're going to do that by placing a layer between the high and the low here in our frequency separation. So I'm going to add a layer there and I'm going to name this layer uh, smoothing. And this is a cool little trick. We're going to grab the brush tool. We're going to right click. We want it to be a very soft edge brush. So I'm going to reduce the hardness to zero. And I want it to be a, a reasonably large brush as well. Uh, maybe a, yeah, somewhere between three and 400 maybe for the size of this image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, well, set the opacity of the brush to 10%. This is not the opacity of the layer, but rather the opacity of the actual brush tool. And what I'm going to begin doing is I'm going to hold down my Alt or Option key and select a color in the highlight area and just paint around the highlight. Then I'm going to select the color of the shadow and paint over the highlight. So you can see what we just did is we just helped smooth out that entire area. So I can select this this uh, shadowy area, paint over the highlight a little bit there, maybe paint a little bit there, then select this highlight and paint over that shadowy area. And I can do the same thing over here. Boom, boom, select that highlight, paint over that, whoop, that's a little bit too much, paint over that shadowy area there. You can see there's before, there's after. So we've really just smoothed everything out. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do it with the rest of the image. I'm gonna start here on the cheek, go over the shadow there, shadow around the eyes, right, just like that. And then select the shadow and paint over the cheek, great. Uh, get the highlight here beneath the nose and then take some of the shadow and just kind of flatten back. Take the highlight on the chin and paint away from it and take the shadow and paint over the highlight area. And uh, you can see, just kind of doing that over and over and over again. The highlight on the nose and paint down the sides of the nose. But then even, don't forget to darken the highlight. And we're going to, well, I should say, we're doing this, but we are going to bring a lot of this contrast back later on by dodging and burning. But when dodging in dodging and burning, we control the shape of the highlights and shadows. We control the intensity of the highlights and shadows um, very quickly and very easily. Could this be done in camera to a certain extent, but not really uh, either. There's so much control you have in dodging and burning. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous. Um, although there is a lot you can do in camera and with lights, uh, make no mistake about it. And now that 
that we've done that smoothing, we're going to go ahead and begin removing blemishes. You can see the blemishes on the skin, but even, and it might be difficult to see, but there's even like a little bit of a bag underneath her eyes. That's just, it's just a coloration difference in skin that we want to get rid of. So let's begin with that, the coloration difference. So remember with the frequency separation, we've separated our detail from our color. So in order to correct a light and color issue, we're actually going to go down to the low layer. We're going to grab our healing brush tool right here. I'm going to set my sample to current layer. I only want to work on this layer. And uh, I'm going to sample down here in the lighter part of her cheek. And I'm going to make my, uh, my brush a little bit larger. And I'm just going to paint over the dark stuff. And you can see there's before. And well, let me redo that. There we go, something like that. So there's before, there's after. It just smooths everything out. It's really what you want. And by the way, don't be afraid to use your undo uh, key. It can be quite powerful and, uh, as many of you know, very, very useful. So you can see we just really kind of just flattened them out a little bit. Um, so that's great. We can look around for any other uh, indiscrepancies that we don't like color-wise and just adjust them real quickly. Um, and we'll actually come back to this color layer in just a minute because I have a feeling that when we get rid of this large blemish here on our forehead, there's still going to be some redness in the skin we want to get rid of. So now what we're going to do, and I'm going to speed the video up for this, I'm just going to go over her skin and I'm going to begin knocking out any of these kind of blemishes. You see that? Uh, and this, for uh, for doing these kind of blemishes, blemishes that are very uh, kind of small and tight, uh, I'm going to be working up here on the high layer. So not on the low layer, just on the high layer. And you can quickly go in and just knock this stuff out. Uh, and it, It's very, very simple to do uh, with a frequency separation setup. So I'm going to speed the video up and I'll be back in just a moment. So as you can see, I really went over and I was focusing on a ton of the details. And the key is the more you focus on the details, even those little tiny, tiny blemishes, the better your finished image is going to be. Um, in fact, I really could spend a lot, lot, lot more time working on this. And the great beauty retouchers spend hours focusing on almost pour by pour and making sure the light direction is hitting it perfectly and everything is lined up and everything is sharp and everything is insanely perfect. So that's just a little disclaimer for beauty photography. Now, when I'm looking over this, I can see I need some smoothing happening here on the edge of the lips, right? There's a spot out here that needs to be cleaned up color-wise, spot out there, spot here on the side of the nose, and then up here on the forehead where I kind of figured. So I'm going to go back to the low layer real quick. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to grab my healing brush tool. We're going to make it pretty large, and I'm just going to go ahead and just try to like level some of that stuff out. I mean, I can't, it's not going to be perfect right now, but I'm not concerned about that because uh, we're going to do some other uh, retouching as well. Uh, all right, there we go. Great. And here on the side of the nose, we can just kind of bring the, bring the color up. Oop, that's not quite right though. There we go. Something like that looks a bit better. Cool. And then up here on the forehead, let's just kind of help level that color out a little bit. Not quite as perfect as I would like it, but we're not going to spend forever here in the blemish correction phase. So there we go. We've we've really flattened out the tones. We've you know gone over it. Obviously, gotten rid of a ton of the blemishes, things like that. Now, with that in mind, we're going to now do another round of frequency separation. And the reason is to number one, add a little bit more sharpening. Number two, do a little bit more skin smoothing, like the tonal smoothing that we did with the brush tool earlier. And the third thing is actually to blur the skin itself. And I know you may be thinking, what in the world are you talking about? Because blurring the skin is not something we want to do, and it isn't. Uh, but there's a specific reason that we do this. So let's go ahead and merge all these layers to a new layer. Control Shift Alt E, Command Shift Option E on the Mac. And we'll duplicate our layer just like we did before. This is going to be high. This one's going to be low. Actually, let's call this one low two, and we'll call this one high two. And then for the low layer, we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, of course, 10 pixels as we did before. For the high layer, we're going to go image, apply image. We're going to do everything the same, except we're not going to apply this to the low layer. We're going to go low two. So it's important to name those layers. Low two, subtract, of course, the scale to offset of 128. Hit OK. We're going to set the blend mode to linear lights. And we're going to apply a little bit more of that smart sharpening. So sharpen, smart sharpen. And I think I'm going to stick with the same thing, the 75 pixels and a radius of one pixel. Uh, and hit OK. 
Now we're gonna do the same exact thing we did before. Actually, this time, just to show you that it can be done in different ways, let's do our smoothing directly on uh, lo the low two layer. Uh, this isn't necessarily the best way to do it, but it is a way to do it, and I just wanna give you guys a lot of versatility. So opacity of my brush tool is set to, well, it's at 11, we can go 10, whatever, it really doesn't matter. And then let's just go ahead and do the same thing. I like to do the highlights first, because generally I like to brighten images rather than darken them, but it all depends on the image. So I went light and then the dark, of course, and I got light here, cool. And then we can darken. Actually, I don't even wanna do the darkening there. I'll just lighten up along the cheeks here. That's great. Uh, along the sides of the nose, cool. Uh, and then lighten up all of that stuff, uh, great. Uh, let's go dark and just take the nose out a little bit. There we go, cool. All right, so that's probably good enough for now. And the, the next thing we want to do, uh, as I mentioned before, is blur the skin a little bit. Now, we're going to blur the skin by adding a layer mask to the high two layer. So we're going to add a layer mask, just filled with white, so it's not doing anything. But check this out. Um, the more we make this high two layer disappear, the more blur we introduce. Because watch this, if I shut the layer off altogether, of course, all we get is the blurred low two layer beneath it. There's no detail being overlaid over all of this color. So if we mask away a little bit of this detail layer, of course we're going to get blurriness introduced into the skin, which isn't necessarily a good thing, but here it is. So we're gonna begin by grabbing the brush tool and again, making sure the opacity is set to about 10. We wanna be very gentle with this because you don't wanna over blur skin. Uh, that's just really bad. It looks really, really bad. But we've got black as our foreground color because black covers up and we're just gonna begin painting gently uh, over her skin uh, just until we see just a little bit of the edge being taken off of the skin uh, and, all, and all of that very sharp, crisp detail. I'm going to stay away from the eyes and the hair. I'm just focusing on the skin. Uh, this is going to end up giving us this kind of cool, almost glow beneath the details effect. Uh, and I still, honestly, I'm a little bit unsure of whether or not I should continue using this effect long term, but it is something that I do right now. So I'm including it in this tutorial. Um, but this is definitely a step that you could skip if you just absolutely cannot fathom the thought of blurring skin uh, because I'm right there with you. Blurring the skin is technically not a good thing to do. But as you can see, we're not really blurring the skin much. We're doing a very light blur layer. Uh, and you can see our mask here. If I alt click it and bring it up, we can see there's what we've done. Uh, and I can actually disable the mask and there's without the mask with no blurring, there it is with blurring. So there definitely is blurring introduced, but here's how we're gonna combat that. We are going to introduce artificial skin texture and here's how we create artificial skin texture. We're gonna create a new layer and I'm gonna name it, you got it, skin texture. Next, we're gonna go edit fill, and we're gonna fill this with a 50% gray. So content should be set to 50% gray, hit okay. Now that we've done that, we're going to go up here to filter and choose noise, add noise. And I like to go, for an image this size, we'll roll with about 25% noise. You wanna make sure you have uniform checked or selected and monochromatic checked on. Hit okay. Now that we've done that, I'm gonna zoom in, make sure I'm at 100%. Actually, I'm gonna shut the skin texture layer off just for a second. If we look at her, the catch lights in her eyes, we can see that there's a light directly uh, in front of her face. Well, not really directly in front of her face, kind of in front of her forehead. So the light is, the shadows are should be coming kind of straight down on her face. And sure enough, we can see underneath her lip, there's a shadow. Underneath the nose, there's a shadow because the light is coming in this, this direction, right? It's coming from the top. That's a horrendous color to choose to paint with. Let me go with something a little bit more noticeable. The light is coming straight down, right? These bits of highlight, they're backlights that are pointing in uh, this way, but they're not giving us shadow on the front of the skin. They're only uh, giving us detail there in those two little bits of skin uh, that the edge lights are lighting up. But the, our main front fill light is casting shadows underneath the eyes, underneath the eyebrows, right? beneath the nose, beneath the lips, and beneath the chin. So when we create this skin texture, we wanna make sure that we manipulate it in such a way that the shadow of the pores that we're gonna create, of course, would be at the, uh, well, the, we're, you'll see, we're gonna set the angle so it looks like the light is coming down from the top. I guess that's the easiest way to put it. So let's turn the skin texture layer back on and we're gonna zoom in on it so we can see what we're doing. We're gonna go filter, stylize, emboss. And what we're going to do is set the angle to uh, negative 90 uh, because in this, by setting it to, or I'm sorry, to 
normal 90. That way you can see the highlight on the bottom and the shadow on the top. It, it makes the, the light look correct for what's going to be our skin texture. Uh, a height of two pixels is great. In fact, if you go any higher, it starts to sort of give you this funky defragmenting effect. Two is a great skin texture. And the amount, I like to really push the amount up because it just gives us a stronger effect and we can always pull it back with opacity and masking. We always have that option. So hit OK and then uh, choose the blend mode of soft light. You can see we've got all this crazy skin texture, which is awesome. I do, however, want to duplicate this skin texture. So I'm going to hit Command or Control J, and we're going to name this. Uh, well, actually, we're not going to name it anything yet. I'm going to now enlarge this whole thing by hitting Command or Control T and setting the width and height to 200%. Whoops. There we go. And now that I've done that, I'm going to hit Command or Control A and just duplicate this bit of skin texture. Uh, we're going to do that by, well, I hit Command or Control A, as I said, to select it, and then Command or Control, Control J to pop it up onto its own layer. So you can see this, we've got all this wasted skin texture just taking up size in our PSD. We can delete that. Whereas this here, it's just the skin texture that's above the image that we're actually going to be using. So rename this layer Skin Texture Large. All right, and now... We'll throw a layer mask on both of these layers. So boom and boom. And we're now ready to begin uh, masking this skin texture to our skin. To mask the skin texture, we want to obviously use our brush tool. And I'm actually going to fill both of these masks with black. So I'm going to select the original skin texture mask hit, and hit Command or Control I. That's going to just flip the white to black. And the same thing for skin texture large, Command or Control I. All right, let's go. Let's start with the fine skin texture. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a bit more and I'm going to grab the brush tool. I want a fairly large brush, I mean, a little bit larger than what we have. We don't want it to have hard edges at, at all. And we want to reduce the opacity to, you guessed it, about 10 pixels. Now in this case we want to paint with the foreground color of white because we want to reveal skin texture. And as you paint, just be very cognizant of where you're painting. And if an area has too much texture, a la right here on the forehead, uh, you can just go and flip your foreground color it's by hitting the letter X, you basically flip there. Now I'm going to show more texture, which I don't want to do. Hit X to black. And when you paint black in a mask, you're going to hide. And that's going to hide a bit of the texture. So by flipping back and forth between black and white and painting with your texture, uh, you're really going to have a ton of control of exactly where the texture goes and how it is feathered in. So you never have anything that looks super obviously like it's digital texture that's just being applied. Because uh, we don't want something that just looks like that embossed effect overlaid on top of her skin. That would not look good at all. All right, so great. We've got we've got some texture here. And the beautiful thing about this is as we sharpen the image moving forward, this texture is going to be sharpened. That's why it's important to make sure you, you get it right here when you're painting it in and don't apply too much texture in a specific area because then as you sharpen, you're going to have very noticeable, very noticeable pockets of pretty bad looking obviously fake looking uh, skin texture. Um, and one of the things, by the way, I should say with the mask, you can see how it's kind of not super smooth. You can alt click or option click if you're on the Mac, alt click the mask to bring up the alpha channel and you can actually blur this. We can filter blur, Gaussian blur, and maybe blur this by like 45 pixels and it's just really going to help fade all of our texture right together. So there's really, uh, it'll be much more difficult to distinguish uh, any kind of change from where there's a lot of texture to not so much texture. Uh, and right here on the side of her nose, maybe just a touch too much texture. All right. We're going to do the same thing with the large skin texture. So I'm going to just paint where I think it needs to go. Um, and this is a different looking texture, which is great because the mixing of the textures is really just going to add a bunch of realism to the effect, uh, which is, hey, realism is always a good thing. I'm going to paint right through there, paint through here. Cool. Okay, looks like I'm getting a little bit too much texture down here. Whoa, hello. That's way too much. Right through there. There's just too much of it. Okay, cool. There we go. Oh, too much there. All right. Uh, oh, you know what? I've been painting with black. That's why I'm not seeing anything. There we go. Cool. Paint some on the cheek. Across. The, see, right through the shadows, that just looks... I mean, you see how fake that looks? It looks really bad. I'm just going to wipe it out altogether. Let's go up the nose. Uh, beside the eyes, that doesn't look quite that good. Across the forehead. There we go. Cool. All right, great. So this looks like we... We got a good amount of this texture laid down. I'll go with a little bit down here on her neck, but obviously that's way too noticeable. So we're just going to paint over that with black. Now we're not getting rid of it. We're just lightening the effect because remember the brush is still at an opacity of 10%. Uh, 
So it's a very, very subtle effect on the neck. So you can see now we just have a little bit on the neck and a little bit on the face. And we're going to do the same thing we did before. I just brought up the Alpha Channel by alt-clicking the mask. We're going to go filter and the same exact Gaussian blur. Just going to smooth everything right into place. At this point, if you see any additional blemishes, uh, we can create a sort of a, a temporary blemish removal layer and there's a little bit too much texture in her forehead I'm not gonna obsess over it too much though for the sake of time this tutorial this tutorial will be long enough I'm sure um, if you see any additional uh, blemishes you want to get rid of I'll just uh, maybe get rid of a couple eyebrow hairs or something um, we're gonna create a new layer and we're just gonna name the layer well we're gonna create the new layer first then we're gonna name it blemishes and I'm gonna grab the healing brush tool and in this case with the healing brush what we're gonna do is set the sample to choose the current layer and below so I don't know, let's just say there's there's these couple little marks here in the highlight, right? We can sample, hold down the alter option key, and we can just paint that away, we can paint that away. Maybe just a little little nudge there above her eye. So just I don't know, little things like that. If you see anything that you want to get rid of, it never hurts to just create a blemish removal layer and just remove those blemishes, even if you've just flat out missed them in early rounds of blemish correction. It's better to get the blemishes than to leave something that's really super obvious and something that the client is not going to be happy with. Uh, so there we go. Great. All right, cool. So with that out of the way, we're going to begin talking about the details and the features of the face, the eyebrows, the eyes, the nose, the lips, things like that. So let's start with the eyebrows. Here's how I like to retouch eyebrows. I like to merge everything I've got to a new layer, Control, Shift, Alt, E, that would be Command, Shift, Option, E on the Mac. And we're going to name this layer. Actually, we're not going to name it anything because we're going to have an eyebrow layer coming out of this. Now what I like to do is I'll use the pen tool, or in this case, I'm just going to use the freeform lasso tool, and I'm going to carve along the top of her eyebrow where I want her eyebrow to be. So something like so. And then I'm going to make this big selection around above it. And there we go. We have that first selection. Now for the second eyebrow, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start over here. I'm going to carve along her eyebrow where I think it should be. Just like that. And then make the big selection up and over. Just like so. Cool. All right. So now that we've done that, uh, what I'm going to do, and actually, you know what? I really should make a new selection on this side. Let me just get rid of this selection. I just held down my Alt or Option key and just minus out the selection. I'm holding my Shift key, by the way, to add to that selection. Let's try that again. Let's trim along here. There we go. Something like so. Cool. All right, so now that we have that, we're going to feather this uh, these selections just slightly. And by slightly, I mean I'm going to go modify feather in like five pixels. Feather radius set it to five pixels. That's great. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to move this straight up just a little bit, maybe right about there. And I'm going to hit Command or Control J. What this is going to do is we've now popped those bits of skin up onto their own layer. We can actually delete this layer beneath, the original big copied layer that we created. And we can rename this layer eyebrow trim or something that's fine and what we'll do is we will move this straight down until we're affecting the eyebrows and in fact trimming them and just getting a good perfect edge across the top and now if we zoom out obviously that looks really bad because we need to mask in all of the edges but that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to add a layer mask i don't like to fill it with black i like it to be white grab my brush tool i'm going to set the opacity of the brush tool to about 40 50 percent something like that i want a very soft edged brush and i'm just going to begin painting away the excess skin so anything that's extra and anything that looks out of place, I just paint it right away. And if I see any like crazy hairs coming back, I'll zoom in. And here I'm painting with white. I just flip my foreground and background color and I'll paint any of those hairs away. All right, great. So we got that side blended in. And now I'm going to blend the other side. Get rid of that. Great. All right, something like so. Cool. Just get rid of that little hair that's sticking up there. Cool. Okay. So we just blend that in, blend this in over here. And maybe that's something for another blemish adjustment layer, but we'll take a look at that later. But you can see there's eyebrows before, there's eyebrows after. It makes such a big difference to do this. Um, and there, there are going to be plenty of times where you look at it and say, oh, I don't need to do that. Uh, but trust me, it makes a huge difference. I got to blend this edge a little bit more. I'm just noticing. There we go. Get the highlight blended in properly because we can. All right, great. So now that we've done that with the eyebrows, we're ready to move on to the eyes themselves. So eyes can always be tricky to retouch. So here's how I like to go about uh, retouching them. We're going to begin by creating a new blank layer, and we're just going to call this uh, blemishes eyes. 
And I'm going to zoom in on the eyes. And you can see everyone's got a little bit of like colorization, or most people, I should say, virtually everybody has some colorization, maybe a little bit red, yellow, and some veins and things like that. She's got really uh, healthy eyes, so she doesn't have a ton of that kind of thing going on. Uh, but we still want to get rid of anything in there that's out of place. So I'm going to begin by using the clone stamp tool, and I'm going to set the opacity to about 40%, something pretty, uh, you know, not even halfway up to 100%. And we're going to sample current and below. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, well, I should say I'm using a very soft edge brush. Uh, maybe I should actually go, let's try a hard edge brush for this. I'm just, I'm going off script here uh, just to follow my gut and maybe make the size of the brush just a touch smaller. So maybe something that's like a six pixel brush. That's great. Okay. And now we're just going to paint away that. And remember, we're only at 40% opacity. So we need to go over stuff multiple times, but that's great because it's going to really allow us to blend, uh, blend all of this together and make it look as natural as possible. All right. Great. Cool. Get rid of some of that. All right. That looks good. And we can try to come over here. The problem here is it's just very dark on this side of her eye. Uh, so here, let's try this. Let's grab the brush tool and we're going to sample maybe a little bit of a lighter, this bluish color. My brush is at an opacity of 50% and I'm just going to paint over the eye that way. It's a little bit too soft. Let's make the brush a little bit harder edged. All right, let's take it over the eye like so. All right, looks a little crazy, but don't worry. We're going to blend it all together in just a moment. In fact, let's do the same thing on this side. Let's see what that looks like. Eh, it might be a little bit too much. You know, let's reduce the opacity of this brush, maybe about 30%. There we go. That looks not, not too bad. All right, let's go back to the clone stamp tool. Let's get rid of some of these lines. Great, great. We're more or less not, we're not really getting rid of the lines so much as just helping them cover up a little bit more, helping to cover them and hide them a bit more. Great, great. And over here, this is going to be a little tough in this portion of the eye. Cool. Wonderful. All right, now we're going to do the same thing with the brush. I actually kind of like that. Let's take this color here and paint with it. Nope, let's actually go with one of the light blue colors from the actual uh, retina. There we go. And we're actually going to um, gonna make that brush a little bit smaller. We're going to uh, do a vibrance adjustment and really knock down uh, the color uh, in the eyeballs themselves uh, because obviously we don't want her to have blue eyes and we're even going to assist in the shaping of the eye because as you can see well, I guess really should add a little bit more lightness up to there um, it, it, this this effect kind of flattens the eyes out a little bit but don't worry about it we're going to actually clean that up in a, a moment alright great so now that we've done that wow that really changes the eyes a lot see that um, we really need to add some shadowing to the sides of the eye. So we're going to do that now. We're going to add sort of the dodging and the burning to the eyeball. Let's start with the dodging though, because that's, uh, that's kind of fun. We're going to add a curves adjustment layer here. I don't need to do anything with the curves adjustment layer. Just set the blend mode to color dodge. It's going to blow our image out. See that? But what we're going to do is fill the mask with black by hitting command or control I. Now that we've done that, we're going to grab the brush tool, set the opacity of the brush here to between 10 and 15%. I find works great. And we're going to paint like over the catch light in the bottom of the eye. I want to right click and make sure my brush is very soft. Paint in the catch light in the top of the eye. And then paint around in the iris, uh, kind of in the middle of the iris here to add light to the iris. And then I also like to paint around that part of the retina right on both sides of the iris, it's going to help create the eyeball shape again because most of the light is going to be hitting that part of her eye. If I zoom in, you can see it's it's still not a, a, a super smooth effect, but like we did before, we can come in and blur this mask. Let's, though, get this eyeball done, and then we'll blur the mask. So let's paint around the retina, right? Just like so. Great. Now we'll paint into the catch light in the bottom of the eye, catch light in the top of the eye, and then also get into the iris here as well. All right, great. So now that we've done that, we will blur that mask, just because we can, we're going to go blur, Gaussian blur, and I don't want to go 45, that's going to do a lot of damage, we want to go maybe more like 20, something like that, that looks pretty good, 20 might be a bit much, oh yeah, something around 10, that looks really good, it just really flattens everything out and gives it a much more natural look, so if we zoom out now, her eyes, you can see a lot of light is hitting uh, the face of them, and next up is going to be the burning, so we're going to do another curves adjustment layer, and this time we're going to choose color burn from the blend mode drop down, again, this is going to make our image do crazy things, uh, actually kind of cool if it was a little desaturated, um, and we're going to fill the mask here with black, again, command or control I, just to invert the mask, and I'm going to zoom in here on the eye, Whoop, make sure I grab the zoom tool, and I'm going to 
gonna grab the brush and we're going to begin by just, yeah, like we talked about, darken up the edge of the eye. But you can see that that looks uh, kind of funky. So I'm just gonna do a spot, a couple spots of darkness on each end of the eye. And then we're gonna blur this mask before we do anything else. So let's just add that darkness, right? And then we're gonna go filter. Let's try the same exact Gaussian blur. It's actually not enough. So let's go blur, Gaussian blur, and we'll crank it up until it looks fairly natural. Something around 25 looks good. Let's move over here and look to see what we've got. Uh, that's pretty good as well. The eye looks a little flat still on that side. Hit OK. Uh, all right, so in order to correct the flatness on this eye, because it is bugging me, we'll go back to the blemishes eyes uh, a layer. And we're going to add a layer mask on that layer. And we're just going to dab with black uh, with the brush just to bring back some of that original eye texture. I know the, the veins and everything like that are there. We can create another uh, layer and paint them away if they absolutely bug us. But just for the sake of time, I've spent enough time on you know that side of that eye. Um, just for the sake of time, I'm going to leave it as is. Um, you can see there's before, there's after. So we are just bringing a bunch of light into the eyes. Let's go back to our color burn layer now. And we want to darken up a few things. We want to darken, actually, believe it or not, around the eye. So we're going to start here. We're going to increase this little crease here coming out of the eye. Uh, make sure our hardness here is set to zero. We're going to darken the upper eyelash like so. We're also going to darken around the outside of the iris. So we're just looking to set the iris off of the retina a little bit. I didn't get quite a perfect paint there. Let's try that again. So just follow what's already kind of a natural shadow and bring it out a little bit more. And then also here for the pupil. Great. And that may look a little bit strong, but we can reduce the opacity of this uh, burn adjustment layer uh, in just a moment. I'm also just going to throw some along the bottom of the eye like so. So do the same thing over here along the bottom of the eye. Whoop, there we go. Along the top of the eye and the lashes. Great. All right. And I'm going to do the same exact thing with the, uh, with the brush tool. Paint along the outside of the iris. Cool. And then around the pupil, just like so. All right, so if I zoom out, we can see what's happened. I have that whole effect. And I am, I'm just going to reduce the opacity of this color burn layer overall. There we go, something around 60 to 70%. Uh, opacity looks great. Cool. So we've added some darkness there. Now, one of the things you may want to do and uh, really can do a lot for your photo is creating new eyelashes or enhancing the eyelashes that are there. There's a lot of different ways you can do this. There are eyelash brushes um, or you can just use a little, you know, uh, like a one pixel brush and paint in your own eyelashes, blur them a very tiny bit, add a little bit of noise, um, you know, maybe reduce the opacity just a smidgen to make them fit in. What I'm going to do in our case, we're not going to add any eyelashes. We're just going to accentuate the eyelashes that are there. We're going to do that by doing another curves adjustment layer. We're going to set this one to color burn as well. And I'm going to fill this mask with black. The reason I'm doing a new color burn adjustment layer is because I want, I want to have separate and independent opacity control over the eyelash darkener. So we're going to zoom in. I'm going to use my brush tool. I'm going to set the opacity. I believe let's just go 100 and I'm going to make the brush quite small. So let's go with a, well, not one pixel. Uh, let's make it a little bit larger than that. Yeah. And actually, no, opacity of 100 is too much. Let's just go 50. All right. So what we're doing is just painting over the eyelashes that are already here. And I'm just, it's just really going to bring them out. So what I'm going to do, I'll speed the video up here and I will see you guys in just a minute and we'll have much darker eyelashes. And now that we've intensified and just straight up darken the eyelashes themselves, we can, well, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. We can just simply reduce the opacity of that burn uh, layer. And it's just going to add a little bit of a darkening agent to our eyelashes. So there's before and there's after. So if you like it, you can keep it. Um, I'm just going to make it very subtle. I'm going to leave mine at about 30% opacity. So there we go. Something like that. It's just thickening them up nicely. All right. Next up, we need to add a vibrance adjustment layer. I'm going to set the vibrance to about negative, I don't know, 60, 70, maybe 50. Uh, so she looks very vampire-esque. I don't want that. I'm going to fill the mask with black. Again, Commander control i to just flip that layer mask. And we're going to zoom in. And what we're going to do is we're going to paint over the retinas of the eyes. And this is because we want to get rid of that blue color cast. So I'm painting white. I want a not really a hard edge brush, a reasonably hard edge brush. I'm going to go with about two thirds hardness, hardness at 67% here. And I'm going to paint over uh, the eye or the retina of the eye, I should say, like so, so that the whites of her eyes truly have no color in them. And what I'll do is we will actually bring a little bit of that blue color back just to ensure that everything still fits together in the image because you are going to have reflected light hitting uh, your retinas. 
So they're not going to be, you know, if they're true gray like this, that looks actually bad. Um, and it certainly doesn't look realistic. I'm also going to get rid of some of the redness uh, here in the tear duct. All right, so that, that doesn't quite look like I want it to look. So what we'll do with the vibrance adjustment layer is just reduce the opacity a little bit. Bring it down to about 50% or so. And you can see we've just sapped away the very obvious uh, strong or too strong blue in uh, the retinas. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do kind of a cool little thing to the iris to make the iris really pop. We're going to create two new layers. And we're going to name the one on top darkers. Uh, and we're going to name the one on the bottom lighter. Um, I'll say lighter and darker. Uh, so with lighter, what we're going to do is grab the brush tool, set the opacity to 100%, and I'm going to paint with the color white. I'm going to use a one pixel hard edged brush. I believe it'll be one pixel at least. Uh, make sure I've got my brush tool, not my clone stamp. There we go. One pixel hard edge brush, and I'm going to paint with white. I'm going to zoom in, and what I'm going to do is just begin painting over the eye or the iris, I should say, anywhere where I see light spots. I'm just going very quickly with my uh, Wacom tablet. I'm painting over uh, anywhere. As soon as I see light, I'm just like swinging and smacking down a little bit of, you know, white uh, color. And we're going to do the same with dark, and we're, but, but just paint over darker areas. All right, I'm going to speed up the video for this, and then I will be right back, and I'll show you what we're going to do with this. So I've got the whites finished up here, and we're going to go up to the darker layer. This is very important. You want to make sure you do this next bit of work on the darker layer. And I'm going to set my foreground color to black. I'm actually going to shut off the lighter layer just so I can see the iris raw again. And I'm going to do the same exact thing. Just begin painting over uh, darker areas with uh, just little spots of black. So I'm going to speed up the video once again, and I'll be back in a moment and show you what we're going to do. All right, great. So we have now created all of these little black spots on the eyes and all these little white spots on the eyes. It looks kind of crazy when you zoom out and look at it. What we want to do is add a very, very slight blur to the lighter's layer and a very, very slight blur to the darker's layer. So we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and I'm, I don't even think I'm going to go one pixel. One pixel might even be too much. Maybe 0 0.5, something like that. Eh, maybe a little bit more. 0 0.8 looks good. Great. We're going to do the same thing with darker by just hitting Command or Control F. It's, gonna, uh, it's going to just apply the same exact uh, Gaussian blur. Now we're going to set both of these layers to the blend mode of overlay. So I'm going to overlay the black and overlay the white. And you can see we're getting this kind of uh, very three-dimensional look. The black is way too strong. So we're going to reduce that opacity down to maybe 20 or 30. And the, the lights are a little strong as well. So I'm going to reduce the opacity of them uh, down to about uh, down to, excuse me, about like 60 or 70 uh, percent, something like so. So I can zoom out. Uh, the lights are still a little bit too strong. There we go, something like that. So we can see there's before, there's after. We're just adding a lot of visual interest and um, depth to the iris. You can perfect it with the opacity going back and forth um, until you like it just perfectly. So now that we've done that, now it's actually time to go ahead and begin dodging and burning. There's a few different ways I like to dodge and burn. We're going to go with kind of the faster way of dodging and burning, and that is simply creating a new layer. We're going to name it D and B, D and B. Uh, actually, I'm going to name it D and B 01 because we're going to have a second dodge and burn layer in a moment. And we're going to go edit, fill, and choose 50% gray for the contents. And important, set the blend mode here to soft light. That just knocks out all of the gray. Now we can zoom in a little bit, and I want to begin constructing shadows and highlights where I want them. Um, I typically like to begin by burning in shadows, so we're going to do that first. Uh, I'm going to grab the shadow, or excuse me, the dodge burn tool, and I'm going to choose burn tool. I'm going to set my range to midtones, and my exposure is going to be at 25%, and I'm going to choose to protect tones. Um, all right, I'm going to make my brush a little bit larger, and we don't want a hard edge brush at all. We want this to be the epitome of smooth. In fact, we're probably going to blur this dodge and burn layer as well. So I'm going to make my... Yeah, my burn brush, about 200 pixels is great. All right, the first thing I'm going to target is anywhere where hair meets skin. So right along here, we're just going to darken that up where the hair is running into the skin, right? You can see there's before, there's after. Uh, we're going to darken the eyebrows. So I'm going to make a few passes over the eyebrows. Eyebrows always need to be thickened up. So make a couple passes over the eyebrows to thicken them up. Uh, we're going to come down here and just increase that shadow that runs right there along the face. And then also beneath uh, beneath her chin or her lip, I should say. Um, and then this little, kind of the, the slot between her lips. We want to just increase the contrast of that. This little divot there underneath her nose, between the, uh, or underneath both edges of her nose. And also the nostrils. We want to make sure that they come through fairly dark. Uh, the bottom of the bottom lip there, that could use a little bit of darkening. Underneath the chin, 
we'll just do it there because we know there should be a little bit of a shadow and also where there you can naturally see shadows and also back there in the hair don't forget about that um, and I by, by the way I should say that we haven't really covered much of hair beauty retouching hair retouching is its own beast um, and we'll get into that at some point in the future all right I want to now darken around the eyes and down the side of the nose like so I'm just going to increase that great let's do it on the other eye now down the side of the nose just like so cool maybe even a little bit underneath the eye and basically with the dodging and burning, you're just really going to do it until uh, you're happy with what you see. If I shut the layer or I convert the layer back to a normal blend mode, you can see this is exactly how we've dodged and burned. And sure enough, you can almost, you know, it looks like a human face, which is kind of cool. We're going to set it back to soft light. There's before, there's after. Now we've only increased the shadows. Uh, in fact, when I'm looking at it, I need to burn a little bit more underneath that eye. There we go. So we've only increased the shadows. Now let's go ahead and increase the highlights. So we're going to choose the Dodge tool. And again, same exact settings, range, mid-tones, exposure 25, check on, protect tones. We're going to begin with the big, the big highlight up here in the middle of the forehead. So we're going to paint across that. I'm going to paint just a couple times, rub it back and forth, um, and just kind of, you know, mess around with it like so. You can see there's before. There's after. Great. We've done that. One of the things, too, I'm going to do is try to smooth the transition of these harsh highlights on the side of her face uh, right into the rest of her face. And I know we sort of accentuated that by running that shadow along her face, but I do still want to preserve that shadow as well because there's so much depth in it. All right. That's great. I want to really make sure I hit the shadow, or the shadow, the highlight here on her nose. We want to make that kind of as close to perfect as we can make it uh, because it's almost like a focal point in the image, the eyes, and then you're going to notice this big highlight running down the nose. And if that highlight is not right, um, the nose is going to look really bizarre. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and just bring out the highlight here on the, the uh, shoulder, over here as well on the shoulder, edge of the face there. Whoop, there we go, edge of the face there, edge of the face there. I want to zoom in on the lips here. And I want to intensify the lip gloss by painting over the highlights you see on the lips. And also, and this is an important place that a lot of people uh, will neglect when they first begin retouching, you just want to accentuate there above the top of the lip, right where the skin meets the, the skin of the lip. Uh, it can be a great place to accentuate uh, a little bit of a highlight. Um, also here, we've got uh, the, the, the little mountains beneath your nose, whatever they're called, I forget. Uh, and then right here above the eye, that's great. Oop, that's actually, the brush was a little bit too small. There we go, above the eye that way, and of course above the eye that way. If we do it on one side, we're probably going to do it on the other side to make sure that we kind of just fan out our highlights, make them look good. All right, and I mean, dodging and burning in general, it's a labor of love. You can spend 10 minutes in image doing this. You can spend 20 minutes. You can spend an hour. Uh, you just The key is go over it. You want to really make sure everything is looking smooth as you're doing it. So now that we've done that, we're going to duplicate this layer, Command or Control J. It's really intensifying the effect. I actually don't hate it. It's a little bit too strong. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to, well, first and foremost, rename this layer DNB2. And we're going to blur it. So we're going to go filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to blur this maybe 35 pixels, something like that. That might be a little bit too much. Let's try 25. Yeah, let's go with 25 pixels. And then just reduce the uh, opacity of this layer slightly. I'm taking it down to about 80%. So there's before, before dodge and burn. There's after dodge and burn. You can see it really, we've just brought all that contrast, boom, right back into the face with dodging and burning. Let's just take a quick look-see and do a, a before and after. I'm holding on my alter option key and I'm going to click on the eyeball for the original layer. There's what we started with. Here's what we've got so far. So we're making a ton of progress. So we're going to go ahead now and add a little contrast to the face in addition to the dodging and burning by way of a yeah, we'll go with curves adjustment layer. Why not? Um, and what I'm going to do is create a simple S curve. So I'm going to pull down, down here and pull up, up here. Just really bumping the contrast in the face. It's bumping the contrast overall in the image too much though. So select that layer mask and we're going to go ahead and hit Command or Control I to fill it with black, just inverting the layer mask as we've been doing over the course of this tutorial. I'm going to grab the brush tool. I'm going to set the opacity of the brush tool to about 25%. Uh, so there you go. I actually just hit the numbers 2 and 5 very quickly and it just set it to 25%. Little tip for you, by the way. Uh, we're going to set the hardness of our brush to 0% and the size to maybe around 3, 400, maybe even a little bit more. 5, 600, yeah, 500. And I'm just going to paint over uh, the face like so. All right. You can see in our mask, we've got the face. And then I'm going to 
it pays special attention to the eyes, down the nose, and across the lips. So if I hold down my alter option key and I click on the mask to bring up the alpha channel, you can see the shape that we have. If you want, we can blur this alpha mask as well. Uh, this will need to be blurred quite a bit before you're going to see a difference. Something like a 100 pixel blur. There we go. And get back to what we had. You can see there's before, there's after. It's a very, very subtle change, um, but subtlety is key, especially when you're dealing with skin and things like this. Now, we're gonna do yet another frequency separation. Remember at the beginning of the tutorial, I said we thought I thought we would do three frequency adjustments. Sure enough, we are gonna do three frequency separation adjustments. This time, we're going to do this for sharpness. We can do a little bit more blurring if we want, um, but I think we're just gonna roll with sharpness this time around. So we're gonna merge all layers to a new layer. Control Shift Alt E, that'd be Command Shift Option E on the Mac. We're gonna duplicate the layer, Command or Control J. Set this layer to the name of High 3, and this one is gonna be Low 3, of course. We'll shut off the High 3 layer so we can get a look at the Low 3 layer and go Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. We're not gonna go 92, we're gonna go 10. We're gonna do what we've been doing all along. Turn on High 3. Image, apply image, and be careful here because it's going to apply this to layer two and not, uh, or, or low number two. We need to apply this to low number three so we don't lose all that texture in our image. Uh, hit OK. And we're gonna set this, of course, to linear light. Now we're gonna zoom in because I wanna get a good look at this uh, as I sharpen. We wanna make sure that we get some good sharpening here. Zooming into 100% is your best bet to seeing the most accurate rendition of your sharpening. We're gonna go filter, sharpen. Smart Sharpen, and I can already see there's a little bit too much texture uh, before from the texturizing uh, steps, but again, we weren't spending a huge amount of time. I'm gonna boost the amount to about 100, uh, and maybe even the radius to like 1.2. That looks good, we'll commit that change. And there we go, we have our sort of final round of sharpening. Now the last thing that we're going to do before we get out of here is do a little bit of color grading. And there's a ton of ways you can do this. I know photographers who do color grading with curves, which is amazing. I know photographers who use levels to do color grading, photographers who use color balance. I'll use anything to do my color grading. I'll use a gradient map to do it. In this case, and for today's example, we're gonna use the selective color adjustment layer because I feel like the selective color adjustment layer doesn't get very much love, and we're gonna give it a little bit of love today. So layer, new adjustment layer, selective color here as you see, and we can call this color grading or whatever, I just misspelled it, but who cares. Um, all right. We're gonna begin actually with the red channel. Oftentimes you're gonna ignore a lot of these color channels, just mess with whites, neutrals, blacks. We're actually gonna edit the reds channel a little bit because I do wanna take a little bit of the red out. Um, I'm sorry, I do wanna boost the reds in her skin and red uh, and skin ha typically has a lot of red in it. So we're going to boost this to about, I don't know, 30% or so. Just gonna kick up, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we're boosting the cyan in the red. I'm thinking the opposite of uh, cyan is red. So if I pull back on cyan, it's gonna boost the red. If I push up on cyan, of course, it's gonna increase cyan. Just a little mental mix up. We're gonna push that to about plus 30 there, if you're not confused. We're not gonna mess with magenta. If I pull away from magenta, it's gonna add green to the skin. I don't like that. And I also don't wanna add magenta. It just looks like, you know, bad uh, Britney Spears pop art from the late 90s or something. Uh, we're going to boost and throw a little bit of yellow into the skin. Um, maybe like plus three, four, five. I don't know. I'll go like plus three or four. That looks cool. Um, and I'm going to increase the blacks as well. So I'm going to push them up to about 10. That looks good. All right. Now we're going to do what I thought we were going to do before. We're going to start by going to the blacks layer. We're actually going to reduce the amount of black in the black. And this is going to give us this faded look. Now, negative 31 is way too much. We're just going to go with like negative five just to give a little pop of that fade into uh, the shadows. Here on cyan, we're going to increase the cyans by about plus five. I'm gonna try to keep it nice and round for you guys. Let's push magenta up about plus five as well. And um, we'll pull away from yellow. Uh, the opposite of yellow is blue. So see how we're just getting a little bit of blueness down here in the shadows. That's exactly what that is doing for us. And whoop, I'm just gonna zoom back out. Um, now we're gonna go to the neutrals from the drop down menu. And here in neutrals, we're going to boost cyan a little bit, you know, just four or five. And we're also going to um, boost the magentas. We're gonna be very easy on magenta. Magenta and green can really get out of hand. So I'm gonna just, you know, throw like a plus two in there. I don't know, something like that. Just, just a drip of magenta, literally a drip of magenta and also just a drip of blue. So maybe we'll go negative two. Uh, yeah, actually that looks like it's too much. We're going to go negative one, the slightest bit of blue into the neutrals or the mid tones of our image. And then as far as the black slider, I'm not going to mess with it because with the mid tones, you can end up just really brightening the entire image or darkening the entire image. And it can look a really good or bad depending on what you're doing. And in this case, I think it would look bad. Let's go to whites. 
All right, here in the whites, we're going to add, we're actually gonna add some red to the white. So we just added uh, cyan to our uh, skin tone before. Now we're actually gonna add a little bit of red by removing some cyan. So we're gonna set that to negative 10. And you might be thinking, well, if you add, just you know move this slider back. Well, the way that it's applied to the whites is a little bit different than the way it's gonna to apply to just the reds, which is why I'm doing it this way. Uh, it's all just in the look and feel of the image. And the more you use something like selective color, the more familiar you're gonna you're gonna get with exactly how it works and how all the stuff works together. Uh, I am going to, I think, throw just a little drip of green into the skin tones. There we go. About negative four looks good. Uh, remember, that can get out of hand uh, quickly. And I'm going to boost the blues. Maybe about plus 10. Might be a little strong, but I'm going to go with it because we can always reduce the uh, opacity of the layer overall. Um, and then I'm going to actually reduce, or excuse me, boost the blacks in the highlights. Boosting the blacks in the highlights, as you can see, is going to really knock out contrast and all of the brighter areas of our image. Whereas reducing blacks is just going to really pump and blow out those highlights. Uh, so just a little something for you to think about there going in either direction. So there we go. If we take away selective color, we have that. If we add selective color, we have that. There's, it's a little bit too like Lomo looking right now. So we're gonna reduce the opacity of selective color, maybe about 50%. And there we go. We find sort of this happy medium between our original image color and this new color graded version of this. So that's it. The long haul, the long tutorial, finally over. Let's bring this up to full screen and zoom in to about 100% and examine what we've done. We have gone ahead and started with the raw image right out of camera and we've retouched this photo uh, that's most people will be pretty impressed by. Um, so I hope you've learned something from this tutorial. I really do. It's been a it's been a haul, as I said. Look at all these layers we've created, all the adjustment modes that we are the adjustment layers that we've used, the frequency separation that we've covered, the sharpening techniques, dodging and burning techniques. I hope all of this has been helpful to you. And if you've enjoyed it, make sure you go check out the website. That's www.tutvid.com for more free Photoshop tutorials. Thanks for watching. Hey, wait, stop. Before you click away from this video, I just want to remind you, if you enjoyed the video, go ahead and hit that little like button. It helps this video go up. And going up is what I like. That's what we want to do. If you also have a couple more seconds, go ahead and leave a comment. That's cool too. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, check out either of these two videos right here for more of the stuff that I do. This hand is weird. Right there. Thanks, guys.